to be on this stage as far as you know, giving a class, uh, you know, being a, a double bass player. Uh, you know, it's, it's always a, an issue trying to find enough good chamber works, things that are going to be uh, you know, well known to draw the public. Uh, uh, works of the double bass that, uh, that are known are Trout, of course, and the Divor and Dvorak Quintet, Prokofiev Quintet. Uh, we actually have a list of 3,000, roughly 3,000 chamber works for the double bass uh, up till now, and uh, which is, uh, that's amazing, isn't it, as far as the, the amount of repertoire available to us as bass players. And, um, you know, it's, but it's still rare to find the bass playing chamber music. Uh, we see a lot of quartet playing. We see a lot of uh, woodwind quintet playing. Um, and, uh, but, you know, the bass, and, and the thing about the bass also that, that, um, that uh, keeps it from being in the chamber music scene a lot has to do with the fact that a lot of the bass players are orchestral musicians. We play orchestra, and that's what we do. So I'd like to explore some of the... Uh, the chamber music aspects of the double bass and, of course, the other wonderful instruments that we have on stage. Um, you know, I, was, uh, I, was, uh, I went to go and see the movie Noah. Did any of you see that at all? No, I, people are staying away. <laughs> but I was thinking, you know, I went to see that. I was like, gosh, that's a really, it's really uh, uh, quite a watery. Uh, <laughs> so that, you know, that's going to, I'm going to talk more about Noah when it comes to the Trout Quintet and, you know, the relationships <laughs> and things like that. Anyway, uh, without further ado, um, would you like to introduce yourselves and, uh, and then maybe we can get started. I'm Thank you. Wonderful. What are you playing? I'm uh, going to play the first three movements of the Quintet. Great. Always great to announce it, too. Look at your audience and say, this is what I'm playing. <laughs> Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. And standing.
let's start with that. Fantastic, great job, guys. My gosh, what am I going to say? You know, right? Wasn't that wonderful? Such good playing. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I mean, a lot of it was fantastic. I really like the fact that you kept your tempos flexible so that it wasn't too fast, it wasn't too slow, it had a good pace to it. Uh, everything made sense, the way that you connected the different sections, the variations, fantastic. Okay, so let's just start in the very beginning. I think the very first thing that we feel, like if I, if I poll the audience, the very beginning, it's very unusual, isn't it? Quite an unusual beginning to a piece, right? How does it make you feel as an audience? I'm sorry? Curious. Curious, right, a absolutely. Curious. You want to hear the rest of the work. Yeah, it, it, it poses a question. Absolutely, and a lot of times the beginnings of pieces are going to pose these, these grand questions. What is the meaning of life? What is the, you know, uh, what is this ballet about? And I think that, that this beginning really throws the audience for a loop. It's like, what? You've got to be kidding me. So I think that if you can really give, give a little bit more, uh, you all have different roles. You're, you're, all, you're five different characters. The bass is the, the stability. Yum, ba, 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 yum, ba, ba. So I make sure that that's extremely clear. Bum, ba, bum, bum, yeah? And then the rest of you play off of that. It's already starting on an offbeat in the bass line, which already throws off the feeling of the pulse. And the rest of you have yada, bada, bada. This, comes, this little snippet comes back over and over again. Tiara, 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 da 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 da, tiara. It's a little bit like, ah, oh, do we have to, you know, maybe we're pitching the tent. This is, this is originally called trapeze, it was a ballet. And uh, it was about a circus and a bunch of different acts. So maybe we're pitching the tent, oh, I don't hate labor, you know, I'm in, in the middle of Siberia in the winter and we're setting up a tent or something, you know, for the circus. So can we have a little bit more of this, I'm not sure what's going on in the beginning. And, but the, the one thing that we do here that is clear are those accents, right? So as clear as possible in the accents. Can we try it one more time? <laughs> Okay, great. Yeah, so I could use a little more accent, even more. Uh, the other thing I would say in the beginning also is yumpa da 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 yumpa. So we have this. A really, it's a little bit of we hear that dance element yumpa da 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 yumpa in the bass, right? So a little bit more in that, like an uplifting staccato notes. Anytime we see the staccato notes in in Prokofiev, a lot of times it's again this up feeling. Um, a very famous musician, I'm not going to say who because I you know, could quote all day. Very famous musician always uh, you know, said, whenever you're playing music, make sure you have no downbeats. No downbeats in music. If you leave the audience with an upbeat at the end of a piece, they're going to want to come back. If you make it a downbeat, they're like, okay, I'm done, I'm going to go home. <laughs> leave them with an upbeat. So even start with even more feeling of up. Okay, can we try it again one more time? <laughs> Yeah, that's good. I think you're playing it a bit safe. I think you can spit out those accents a little bit. Have more fun with the line. Absolutely. As the notes go up, you can get a little louder. As they go down, you can get softer, but the accents are clarity, clarity. And, uh, and also, if you think of this as a ballet, I mean, you guys all know that. You did some research on the piece, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, you're fantastic musicians. So, so you, you know that there, there are dancers that need to be able to you know, understand what's going on in the, in the music part of things. So visualize dancers, you know, if a dancer is moving on the stage, you know, you have basic motion, you have up, down, side to side, forward, back, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm being very, very, very simple with that. But the up and down motion is extremely important. Up, down, right? So can we try it one more time? Even more, the more feeling is that we are pulling the audience along and really engage them as much as possible. A lot of times when we're in the rehearsal room, we're in the room, we're by ourselves. As soon as the audience is there, immediately we have to interact with them. So play for them, 100%, one more time. 
Good. Okay, so that was much better. Feels a little bit more like they're waking you up, right? I mean, it's like a little bit more of this, oh, I'm feeling like I want to sit at the front of my seat. Fantastic. The only other thing I would say for your line is make sure da la da 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 sing through that long note. Uh, in the Romantic era, uh, we tend to lengthen short notes and we tend to compress long notes, like Brahms E minor, minor cello sonata, ta da la da da ta da 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 la da right? Which is very different than dum bum bum. That motion, the energy of the classical era, right? So think this, this as though this is a little more classical. You know, Prokofi was big in the, in, into classical music, classical style. Okay, uh, can we try that uh, when the clarinet comes in, please? Fantastic. Now a couple of things. Now we're kind of we're elaborating a little bit on what the oboe did, right? It's a little bit of elaboration. So da 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 da. You have to be like, we have to do this. Come on, guys. You're like da 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 da. -da. You're like maybe the, the the you know ringmaster. You're saying, come on, we have to build this tent. Okay. So a little more insistent there. And I would say um, for you in the violin, when you're when you're playing the pizzas, I think of dum bum. Bum, bum, absolutely equal on all four pitches. Be like, like you're, again, you're hammering something. Boom, 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 boom. And then right after that, da 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 dum, bum, 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 bum. Can I just hear that from you one more time, just by yourself? Da dum, bum, 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 bum. Good. Okay, now how about this? Can those four sixteenth notes be really legato? Ya da 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 dum, bum. Uh, yeah, so it gives us a little more contrast. Da yum bum bum. It's kind of like a suspension, right? Da yum bum. And then when we see the the carrots, uh, see this is the thing. Uh, carrots. What do they mean? And uh, it's not the C A R R O T S, of course. This is C A R E T, carrot. So that wedge-like shape of an accent. Um, so you know, everyone says. In Beethoven, I have no idea what the carrots mean. We see carrots a lot in Beethoven. It could mean a dot, it could mean something, an accent. I think that Prokofiev is a lot clearer with his use of carrots. I have my personal view on what Beethoven carrots mean. Maybe I'll state that in a little bit. But uh, in, in Prokofiev, for me, it means extremely secco and extremely bright and lifted. Bum, 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 bum. So instead of being heavier, Da 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 dum bum 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 bum. Can we try that one more time? Yes, exactly. A faster bow speed. And can I? I know I shouldn't do this, but could I borrow your violin for a second? You don't mind? Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. I'm a bass player, so. So I think that the. Uh, You could even do two up bows on the da 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 up up down up 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 bum 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 bum. Great! I like that. I like that. It's fantastic. Okay, can we try it with everyone? Da 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 da. And 
Good. And can I make one more suggestion? That was, that was good. I'm starting to hear a little bit more of the ideas. Again, whenever we're going to play something publicly, we need to expand our ideas. Always, when you go on stage, and the larger the hall, the larger you have to expand your ideas. Uh, the thing about uh, the color palette that we're going to use in this piece, it's, it's narrow and it's wide at the same time. It, you want to really say, what, what, is the, what are all of the colors that I'm going to play? What are all of the ideas? And how can I really expand them to be a much larger group? And you have to think that this is you know, an accompaniment, again, for a large ballet company dancing on stage. We want to have a little more, more uh, expression, more varied colors, dark, bright, shimmery. You know? And it, a lot of it is visual. What are the visual elements that I see on stage? See the dancers dancing, all of that. You know? There may be something sneaky and slinky. And there's also something where they're you know, bouncing up and down, tumbling. Absolutely. OK. Um, let me just quickly go into a, I have a couple of notes here. So let's see, where did my notes go? Uh, first theme and variations, ballerina. Second, dance of the boars. Third, tumblers leap out. Fourth, challenge to a duel. And fifth, they mourn the dead ballerina. Oh, that's just so tragic. Right, so, so maybe this beginning is like we have to immediately feel for this ballerina. We have to really link into her, okay? Um, and I think for you, Asa, make sure that you're very clear on those um, bomb, bomb, bomb. Keep them all like you're leaning forward and keeping them in line. Good. Okay, can we keep going uh, from here? Right where we stopped. Okay, good. Okay, let's take this section. I'm, I'm really, you know, keeping things very, I know I'm like being very picky right away and you know, working on smaller details, but I think it's extremely important. First thing, bass and clarinet. Let's just hear that. That's such an important note. It's by itself. Right, absolutely. Good. But it's like, like, what? What's going on? Change of scene, change of idea. And can I have maybe a little bit more where the reason why the bass stops before the clarinet, I, look, I, I think, for me, is that you want a change of color. I think maybe we want more bass to begin with, and then we end, want to end up with more clarinet. So we go from a darker sound to a more clarinet sound. OK, but, but we lost a little bit of the energy. So I'm going to need even more, like, aha, uh -huh. a little bit more of that. Ooh, wasn't that neat? That's kind of, that's neat, isn't it? Right, that's great. So a lot of times when you're playing chamber music, you can, you can really experiment with balance within the group. If you're playing something with someone else, it doesn't always have to be the same thing. You can experiment sometimes. You want one voice to be louder. And through a passage, and this happens on the piano as well, you know, just the piano by itself. You can change colors. You can go from the left hand to the right hand, go from dark to bright in a run. The trout quintet is like that in the beginning. We won't tell the next group. Uh, good. OK, so let's try it from there. And uh, I'm going to need more gliss. Can I just, let's hear that. That's a, this is an interesting. Oh, just the bass. Isn't that interesting? Okay, one more time. Let's hear that one more time. It's very good. Good. I mean, he's a very good bass player, isn't he? Now can I have even more dorm, dorm, pull us up. Dorm, dorm, boy, 
Good. Excellent. That was very good. It's like this, again, it's this upward motion. Going from the base to the clarinet with color. Also, this is another type of lifting. Okay, can we try it from one before three? Good. Okay. And now we're starting to hear a different element in there. There's a little bit of this swell. It's like, ooh, there's something going on. It's a little eerie, right? Goosebump moment. Can I have a little more of the, can you phrase that, that a little bit more? In the, vi you know, clarinet, vi violin has it once in a while, but mostly in the clarinet. Can I just hear it? Let's hear that. Yeah, yeah well, just, yeah, sure. Can you move? What does that sound like? Like the wind, right? Interesting, he gives it to a woodwind instrument, huh? <laughs> right, so can you give me a little more wind, like it's cold, we're in Siberia. <laughs> Keep it moving. <laughs> Good, now, now do it with, with a little bit more air, but not with dynamics. <sighs> a little faster. <laughs> Good, yeah, you can experiment with that. You know, imagination is key to being a chamber musician. You know, what is the character? What, what kind of character is there? Uh, what am I imagining? What am I feeling? Cold wind blowing across, you know, the tundra. Okay, um, now let me hear the, uh, let's see, let's hear it, uh, viola and uh, violin. Yeah, that three. Good. Okay, so we have a, we have a couple of uh, this. Well, that you guys played a little bit later, but that same idea. That that's going to be, um, you know, you have two ideas. You know, da, 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 a little bit of the, what the clarinet has, and then a little bit more playful response to that. So you, can you really change up there? Can we have everyone from three, please? Uh, Barba four. <laughs> Yeah, so one, two, three, four. Okay, good, good. So now, can I have a viola at three? At four? Three. Uh, at three. So. Good, so now we have ta dum, ta dum, e a, e a, and later on the violin has ta yum, ta yum, right? So that has to be very different. Ta dum, ta dum. Bright and cheery, like, oh, okay, everything's going to be fine. And toy, toy, a little sad. Oh, I'm very sad, very expressive, right? Mm -hmm. So, really a good contrast. And what I would say is, whenever you have the dashes, what does that mean? Longer. Longer and in Prokofiev? More in this accent. Tiny bit of an accent. Ta, da, da, tom, tom, tom. A little bit of a weighted, it's not necessarily an accent. But it's a little bit of a weight. Da 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 ta ta da 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 pom pom pom. Heavy work. Okay, good. Now let me try. Let's try it from four. Good. Okay. Uh, and again, being very picky. Can I borrow your violin again? See, I really want to play violin. It's a lot easier to carry for some reason. <laughs> so I need a little bit of vibrato on that first note. I need to really cry through that. Good. 
OK, so you get the general idea, right? Um, maybe we can move on to another movement. Or let's move to the variation one, if that's OK. Good. Okay, we'll start with that. Very good. <laughs> right before the bass solo. How could I? Uh, okay, let's try it from, uh, from variation one again one more time. And, and again, uh, Ben Tenuto. Do you know who Ben Tenuto is? <laughs> ah, I'm full of jokes. It's horrible. Uh, can we try that one more time? And a little more Ben Tenuto. Okay, so the only other thing I would say about that is no dashes. And also, if I think tenuto, I usually don't want to think, and tenuto just means stretched, pulled, uh, which is, again, it, he's not using the tenuto marking that we normally do. Does that make sense? So it's quite different than having a dash. Okay. Right, so I would say a little bit of sinisterness in that. Good, and now, and then this answer to it, maybe a little more innocent, and then that 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 tenuto marking, the European Russian tenuto marking, that dash has to be a little bit more of a tom tom and I would say try it separate bow with separate bows, up down up, and try to really pull legato one more time. Good. I like, I like the contrast more with the separate bows. Okay. People tend to do it down, down, and then hook the bow. But the only issue there is that we lose that tom, pa, tom, pa, tom. And then the other, and right here, ta, tom, tia, tom, ta, tom, that can move a little bit. Ta, tom, pa, tom, pa, tom. Good. And then um, here, when the clarinet and the oboe have this thing, can we hear a little bit of that? Just the clarinet and oboe. Oh, no, the starting from the third bar? Okay, third bar of So you guys have to be one musician. Absolutely. There's a little bit of a break in the line, right? This is one long line. So that has to be, you know, make sure that there's, uh, the dynamically you guys are balanced. There's not one person that's more, but you have to really spin the phrase as one. And then the da -dum, da -dum, that's like Schubert, you know, like a little bit of this energy going on, or Mozart. Bum, 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 bum. What's missing? 
that's the energy of Mozart. And I think this is a little bit of da, 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 da. It's soft and it's, it, it creates another layer of mood, okay? Can we try everyone uh, one more time, variation one? this because it's a now it's a bass clarinet duo it's interesting you're part of the woodwinds and you're part of the strings you're in the middle okay so I would say with that if you can yeah, it's hard work draw out the fur the down down bows yeah and then when you come in together a little more shape to it Piano or mezzo piano never means this. It's a range of dynamics. Whenever we see dynamics, we say, okay, I'm piano, I'm gonna play soft. Mezzo piano, I'm gonna play mezzo piano. But, uh, but it's not necessarily so. I think that you have a range and you can utilize it as much as you want. And also there's a difference between solo piano and accompaniment piano. You have to decide what that is. Okay, good. Uh, can we try number nine? Okay, so in this section, uh, well, I wanted to go on a little bit, but uh, da, 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 that stuff, again, a little bit more of the, the violin has that, you know, viola has that, and then uh, the violin has jump, bum, 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 that thing. Can I hear whoever has at number 10 the eighth notes only? Okay, one more time. Yeah, make sure you don't hold your breath when you're cueing. Good, yeah, so breathe in, breathe out. Dun, 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 dun. One more time. I mean, so you're cueing it. Okay. Good, that was very good. If you can keep this really seco, and then once you get to the quarter notes, can it be different? Ta, 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 ta. Like you're really tired. One more time. Almost, you can experiment with that. Should feel a little bit like, oh, I've lost a little bit of energy from that. That's, Hard to do tiptoe stuff, you know. Uh, let's try it from letter, uh, letter 11, please. <laughs> Good. And now from this, again, this is another spot where you can do color change. Da, la, 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 da, 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 da. From the bottom, it rises up to meet the uh, top voices. Can we try that one more time? So this should start off dark. 
and then we should become brighter later on. Dark. La, 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 dark. Okay, so getting in, da, 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 da. You can't slow down too much because the winds have to answer. And then make sure these dots are dum, bum, da, da, yum, bum, bum, the way the violin does it later. Okay, good. Uh, now let's go to variation two. Okay, very good guys. Now for this, what does it say there in the beginning for the violin? Can you read that out loud, please? And what does that mean? Right, so you want to play everything really at the tip. A lot of times we play this spiccato. It's not necessarily spiccato. I think it's on the string. It's just very quick and very horizontal. Can you try that? Yep. Yeah, so it's a little bit more fiery. You can even have a little more contact from time to time, and the accents come out even more. Right? You don't hear us being dun da 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 dum da da dum but yum da 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 dum da da dum da 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 dum. So that's that's the big change there. As much energy can I I'm gonna borrow your violin again. It's a very nice violin, by the way. I wonder if my wife is watching. I can't play. Anyway, but you get the general idea. It's really fiery. Uh, and that con brio is as fast as possible. I mean, I always think of this as being as fast as possible. But the limitation is, as long as it's clear, relate music to speech. If I speak so fast, I know you can understand me. It doesn't work. So it has to be only as fast as it can be clear on the lowest instrument. That's what I would say. It always depends on the lowest instrument and how clear that can be. And he's a very clear player, so you guys can do this quickly. OK, one more time. Good, OK. So maybe that's a tiny bit frantic, so you can use a little more bow, right? A little more bow at the tip. And uh, can you hear the pizzas? Great. Isn't that, aw isn't that great? I mean, that's so fun. Yeah, it's awesome. So what I hear is thumb, bum, 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 bum. Absolutely. Go with it. Bum, 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 bum. It's a dance, right? Yeah, a little bit of right of spring in there. Tiny bit, right? So can I think right of spring a little here? Can we try this again one more time? Not too fast. Good, okay. Another rule of thumb, don't slow down. So that's like a little Hungarian in there. Put a little little bit of Hungarian. That should be heavy. Accented full bows, tam pa yum ba da 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 in the back again, right? Good. Okay, one more time, and I can I hear the? Let me hear the um, clarinet and oboe, please. Da 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 da, ba 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 ba. Second bar.
Good, that's not bad. Make sure you don't slow down when you're doing the tongued articulation. It has to spin. And a little bit of phrasing that way to the low notes. So we go. Then you actually fall on the ground. Like you're, you're an acrobat in the sky and you're doing these stunts and you accidentally fall. This is like the tr before it actually gets started. You know what I mean? And now can I, I'm going to have you guys do something very unusual. And I do this with wind players sometimes. Can you guys put your stands all the way down? You know what I'm going to do? Now, can you squat on the ground like this? You're going to do this. You're going to balance yourself on the, on, the, on the front of your feet. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Good. Now, can you play it again one more time? Ha, ha, ha. I'm so mean, aren't I? You hear the difference? Isn't that amazing? Do you feel the difference? Yeah. Absolutely. So what did it do? <laughs> easier to play. Isn't that weird? Why would squatting on the ground be easier to play? I oh, I felt it felt more, more difficult. Fire, yes, I, it gave it a little bit more fire. This needs a little bit more fire. It is a little bit easier to play for some people. And it all depends on how much tension you have in your lower back. So if I, squ if I squat on the floor, right, and I balance, my lower back is completely loose. There's no tension back here because I can't tense up on my lower back or I'll fall backwards. You find your balance, you loosen your lower back so you can breathe. And that's the key, okay? That was great. And the last two notes, ta, ta, were fantastic. And you didn't slow down into that. That was great. Okay, that's the general gist of this. You know, a lot of up, a lot of falling down, a lot of tumbling, a lot of that, okay? Variation, th uh, let's see, let's go on to the next thing. Oh, actually, let me hear, um, let me hear 16, please. Good. So now that we have that, now that we have that visual element of tumblers or of people up in the stratosphere doing all these tricks, you can hear the different elements that is in the music that, that supports that theory. Ta 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 ta, climbing back up. Ta 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 ta, da ya da ya da da. That's you know crazy stuff going on. Okay, so that has to be extremely extroverted. Okay, very good. And all within the, the, a good tempo. Um, can we go on to a different movement? Maybe a little, little, bit of the, little bit of the second movement and then a little bit of the third. How's that? Beginning of the, this is one of the, my most favorite uh, bass parts ever written because it's so bass. It's so bass. <laughs> Okay, good, good. This, no, what a great part. I mean, that is unbelievable. So interesting. Now, uh, first thing is, this is the dance of the boars. And again, I always relate it to, I, I think of this as being the muscle man. In the, in the, I, you know, you decide what character you are. I'm the, if I'm playing this, I'm the muscle man. Uh, boars, you know what it means to be a boar? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. But seriously, the dance of the boars, do you know what boars are? No, uh, B O O R. Vulgar, unruly, causing trouble. So this needs a little bit of bah, bum, bum, bah, smashing things, breaking bottles, things of that nature. You give me more. Now, 
Now it's really impressive that you're playing that all on the E string. I think, ah, you don't need to do that. Okay. Play it all down. Can I just borrow that for a second? Yeah. Uh, haven't played in a while. Uh, I went on vacation for a little, you know, spring break and all that stuff. <laughs> a little dry there. Yeah. But you get the general idea. A little bit, rah, don't be afraid of that. Go for it. And then right into them. So you don't want to diminue it. Dum, dum, pa, ya, ta, ta. Right? Good. Absolutely. It should be so much. You should have fun. You should be like, I don't care if I scratch. I don't care if I have an ugly sound. It's just go for it. You can always back off. It's about how far are we willing to go. That's always what it's going to be. And again, this is forte. So play it as loud as you can. And then the fortissimo, play it louder. OK? <laughs> Good. And then those pizzas, pom, 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 pom. Again, as open strings and as loud as you want. Good. OK, so that's basically that. And also, the, the other instruments want to go slightly faster after you play. So I would go with them. I think they're right. So it should be a tiny bit faster. Uh, OK, let's go to the next movement, third movement. OK, so I'm going to read this before you guys play. No, I should read it afterwards. Ah, I'm going to read it. The most interesting is the third movement, the tumblers. This is Prokofiev writing. Uh, he wrote in the summer of 1924. But it will also be the hardest to perform for both the musicians and the dancers, since it is written in the form of a fast-running fugato in five crotchets. <laughs> Good old crotchets. Uh, in, uh, British translator here. Uh, both the form, that is the fugato character, and the counting in five crotchets per bar demand a performance of great precision and agility. Agility. Uh, oh, no. Uh, particularly if you take into account that the five crotchets, 10 quavers, are divided in one bar, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, as per usual, and in another, 3 plus 4 plus 3. Oh, my gosh. With good teamwork, it should turn out very lively, but don't panic because the other movements will not present much rhythmic complexities. <laughs> yeah, right. OK. Now, on that note, let's hear it. That's very good, guys. Excellent. Now, uh, to, you want to make sure that the beginning is really together. Dun, 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 dun. Give a big beat. And jump. Dun, 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 dun. And also, I see you guys are reading off of different parts. Could you guys please hold up the, those two parts to the audience? OK, so there's a. Right. Oh, I see. You're both, are you, you're both reading off of the simplified, then? I'm not. You're not, right? OK, so there's a simplified version and a normal version that's written out. Prokofiev thought, me, it might be a little difficult for the musicians, and we're going to write out a simplified version. No simplified, because, no, no, you can do it for now, but later on. The reason is it has to do when the simplified is broken up into smaller measures. And what happens is we lose a little bit of the big line. And so we want that. And it's, a, it's about this down, up, 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 up. Really want to feel it that way. And so all of the downs have to be really down. Can we try it again one more time? OK, one more time. And it's again, it's not that long of a stroke, but it's down, up. Down, up. Up, 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 up. 
Okay, good, 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 good. And then, and then this spot has to be wild. Can I just hear that? Oboe and clarinet, please. Isn't that neat? That's such a neat part. I need more oboe. And absolutely, really spit it out. Don't be afraid of what is the ugliest sound you can get. Go for it. Good. OK, do me a favor. For both of you, put your heels together, completely together. <laughs> Feet apart. I'm really picking on those guys, aren't I? Feet apart. Just natural. Doesn't have to be. And knees bent. Play it again one more time. Let's make a difference. How you stand really makes a difference. Also for the strings. If I lock my knees, I, I tense up my back. Also, if I put my heels together, my center of gravity is like this. If I put my feet apart, I can lean. I can compress my rib cage on the right or the left, which makes dip breathing difficult. I need to keep my rib cage completely free, my lower back free, and it goes for the strings as well. Uh, keeping the shoulder blades completely free, very important. Okay, good. I think that's great, guys. You guys are awesome. Fantastic job. That's really. Very good. Really great job. You guys are awesome. Great job, guys. Really good. So we're going to take a break, or is it straight through? OK, great. Excellent, excellent. Very good, very good. Absolutely. So isn't, isn't that a great piece? I mean, you know, that's, it's one of those pieces where, uh, you know, this is my favorite chamber music piece of all of them. Definitely, there's no question. So. I'm just going to put this down here for a second. Yeah, very, very good. Both master class and time. Oh, good, <laughs> good.
fantastic, guys. Very, very good. Bravi. Yeah. Take a bow. Absolutely. Stand up. Stand up. OK. So that's very well done. You guys are excellent. You guys all play very well. So I have a question for you. Do you guys know the, what the song is about? You guys have read the lyrics and all that? Good. Fantastic. OK, I'll read it to you guys. In einem, uh, wait, oh, I should read it in English. Uh, uh, let's see. In a bright little brook, there shot in merry haste a capricious trout. Past it shot like an arrow. I stood upon the shore and watched in sweet peace the, che the cheery fish's bath in the clear little brook. A fisher with his rod stood at the water's side and watched with cold blood as the fish swam about. So long as the clearness of the water remained intact, I thought, he would not be able to capture the trout with his fishing rod. But finally the, grief, uh, the thief grew wary of waiting. He stirred, stirred up the brook and made it muddy. And therefore I realized it, and before I realized it, his fishing rod was twitching. The fish was swimming there, uh, squirming there, with, and with raging blood I gazed at the betrayed fish. At the golden fountain of youth, you linger so confidently, but think of the trout, and if you see danger, flee. Mostly it is from lack of cleverness that maidens miss the angling seducers. So beware, otherwise you may bleed too late. Very odd ending, isn't it? And of course, um, Schubert left out that last little at the Golden Fountain, and he, he left all that out in, in, the, in, the, in the actual song that he used. So um, I'd like to start by showing you a picture. Uh, do you guys know who it was written, the, the Trout uh, song was written for? His friend? Yep, his friend. Uh, 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 Michael Vogel was his name. And uh, apparently they took a little trip together, right? Do you know the story? Do you want to? They went to the. Uh, they went on a walking tour. Yep. Say, say it to they them. Went on a walking tour, yep. and uh, I don't know much after that, but I know that the inspiration from that was drawn from the walking tour that they took in Germany, or <laughs> uh, Germany? Yeah, Vienna, uh, yeah, just okay. outside of. Uh, yeah. So this is a. Um, oh, Austria, I guess I should say. Yeah. This is a uh, a character that was that was drawn of Vogel, who's the bigger man, and Schubert, the little guy. <laughs> Isn't that great? So I'll pass this around. So, uh, and the guy that did the caricature, check this out. Look, at this is the guy that drew the caricature. <laughs> what a, he looks like a character, doesn't he? <laughs> anyway, so I'll pass these uh, around, and uh, feel free to take a look, you know? But, you know, as you can tell, Schubert, Schubert's always looking around. He enjoyed the walk very much. It was appar apparently it was beautiful summer. Uh, it was uh, you know they enjoyed the uh, scenery, uh, and he took this all in. I guess uh, you know maybe he was a very visual person. I think a lot of his music is very visual. By the way, um, Vogel uh, also had another piece written for him by Schubert, and that's the Erlkönig, uh, the Elf King, another wonderful uh, song. And uh, Schubert loved him as a singer, thought he was the greatest. And, uh, and Vogel thought the same about Schubert. They both really enjoyed working with each other. And so, uh, you know, this is a collaboration. And um, uh, this was actually, the, the piece was written for uh, a cellist, a wealthy cellist, uh, who decided that he wanted, he, he really enjoyed the song, he enjoyed Schubert's company, and he wanted a piece written for his friends. So, and then this, that's the way this came about. This is a, this is a a very friendly piece. It's written with the idea of, okay, we have a gathering of friends, we're just gonna play. This is the, this is the instrumentation that was available and this is what Schubert wrote for, that, uh, uh, that Pumgard, Pumgarden wanted to have uh, um, written for. So let's start in the very beginning of this. And what I'd like you to do is, I, I thought that was very beautiful. I, I, I like the tempo. I think that also, uh, within not only having it be a, a slower tempo, I like it slightly slower than people usually tend to play this. People tend to think of the song and immediately we're off to the races in the beginning of this. And I like the fact you're taking it slower. It's kind of like, oh, I'm a little bit dreamy, right? So can we try that one more time?
great. So I have a question for you. Which parts are you you're reading off of the Peters or the which edition? Henley, great. Yeah, the Henley is definitely the way to go. Uh, that's, I find that that's the most original. Um, can we try it again one more time? And how about that first note, the very first note? What I hear is tom, tom. Perhaps maybe we don't need to give away the secret that it's going to be a flowing piece. Maybe I can take my time on that first note. Da, dum, da, dum, dum, dum. So maybe a little more legato, a little more singing. Da, dum. Draw us into the piece. Okay, one more time, one more time. Make sure, make sure before you start, I don't need to have any extra tension, especially between your shoulder blades. That's the spot where whenever we get tense, the shoulder blades lock up. So I'm completely loose. There's no, you know, it's not like uh, um, Pam Frank, who's a wonderful violinist and great teacher, you know, she wrote a little, there was a little article that she wrote. Did you guys read that? It's great. Um, and she said, you know, it's not like we're doctors or, you know, if you make a mistake, something tragic is going to happen. No, you know, it's, you have to be okay with making mistakes. It's the greatest thing to be human and to make mistakes. And we have to be okay with that. That allows us to have freedom. And then once we're free, then we can start thinking about the music. So physically, I have to be, no, oh, I don't care if I play beautifully or ugly. It doesn't matter. I'm allowed to make mistakes, and then I, then I can adjust from there, okay? So can we try it one more time? And can I have you do one more thing? Can you sit a little bit further to the front of the chair? Yeah, just a little bit further front. Right, good. One more time. Okay, that's better. That's definitely better. Now can I have you do something else? Can you start with vibrato? Da -da. And I, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to play it through with this little, just the left hand. No bow. And what I want you to do is I want you to think, imagine color. Da -da. Da -da. Just the left hand by itself. What color do I want? So try, try running through the, the, the beginning of this. Da -dum, just the left hand. Da -dum, pa -dum, pa -dum, pa -dum. Dum, pa -da, la -da, la -da. Pull myself along musically with the left hand first. And then allow the bow to sing on top of that. Right? Good. One more time. Okay, good. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Um, it, a lot of times we are, we kind of have our left and our right hands fighting each other, because we're really not sure what we're doing with either. We're just tense. So I would say take it apart. Do just the left hand, uh, and then just the bow. You know, sense of vibrato. How am I pulling my sound out? And then combine the two, right? Uh, and the other thing about it is, if you pull with the left hand first, right, it's going to be a lot more about color. And I heard a little more brightness to your sound, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Great, great. And now the rest of you guys have to really support him. So that means making sure you're not late, right? So you guys can pull us down into the murky waters. No, we have to be bright, a little bit brighter, a little bit more on top of the beat with him. Can we try one more time? Very good. Left hand first. Okay, one more time. Really, you guys have it memorized, right? Yeah, you can all look at him, absolutely. Really be on the front of your stool.
good. Okay, last thing I would say has to do with the dots. Bubbly, right? There's a little bit of bubbliness going on there, right? So can we have a little more of that? Uh, can I borrow your violin? <laughs> wow. Why, thank you. Thank you very much. So the other thing is, uh, ooh, that's a tall chin room. Wow, that's amazing. I always like to start down bow. And I mean, a little, you know, you can experiment with something like that. Maybe I can change up the, the bowing, things like that. Um, okay, let's move on to variation one. Da 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 da. Good, okay, let's start with that. Let me just hear, very good. Let me just hear uh, viola and violin, please. Yeah, so this needs to line up really perfectly. Does that make sense? He has all the moving notes. So you have to really fit into that. You're the color, and he's the brook. Can we just hear that? Oops. Good. Now, can I ask you to do me a favor? Can I have you go from pull us up? A little more feeling as though we're being lifted. So each each uh, set of notes. Yeah. So the beginning is Bring out those that that triad. Can we try that one more time? Just viola. Just try the very first the first room. Yeah. We need to hear that third. Yeah. Can we hear that one more time? Now, yeah, good. Maybe a little more simple on the next one. Yeah, da 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 da, da 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 da, da 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 da. You can experiment. Some are more open. Some are more focused. Right? Good. Okay. Can we try it all together again? One more time. Actually, let's hear cello, violin, and viola, please. Da 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 da. Good. And then, and also, can be a little bit more whimsical. You can have more fun. The hardest thing to do in music is to find love and joy. <laughs> it's kind of true, though, you know? We always are worried about this and that, but, you know, love and joy are the two hardest emotions to find in life and in music because we're always worried about what other people think. Oh my gosh, he's, you know, he's feeling love or he's happy. No, we're going to squash him down. No, no, no. So again, it, those two emotions are the most fleeting emotions. They come and go very quickly. You can fall in love and fall out of love like that, right? You can, be, you can have joy and immediately squash down. So that's something that you can always bring to the audience. Leave them feeling like they've found joy in your playing. So how can I find joy? What I have to do is I have to practice that. <laughs> I have to practice joy. Um, I, always, I always relate it to the Bach cello suites, the first suite. Simple beginning. It's the first beginning of the first suite, the prelude. We move through, we get to the Sarabande. Uh, for those of you that know the first suite, the Sarabande has the most tension. Midlife crisis. And after the midlife crisis, what happens? Release. We can't hold that midlife crisis to the end of our lives. We don't want to. I mean, we're done with that. We want to move on, right? Minuets. Da, 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 la, da, 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 da. Oh, where am I going to go from there? I'm completely free. Then minuet two. Reflection. 
reflection on life, reflection on the rest of the suite. And then at the end, then we don't go from there to the jig. We go back to the first minuet. Ta -da -da but it's different now because we're moving ahead in our life. And then we're going to the jig, which is joy. <laughs> At the end of our lives, we want to find joy. After all the stuff that we go through, we want to find joy. Bach is reflecting on life in the first cello suite. It's like average life. Beethoven, first symphony, simple. Second, third, fourth, Beethoven five. Midlife crisis. Da, 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 Tom. Oh my gosh. <laughs> What's the sixth symphony? Pastoral. The pastoral symphony. Oh, I have to let go after five. I can't keep it, keep it going after the midlife crisis. Seven, dum ba dum bum ba dum bum. We start hearing that. Eighth symphony, then ninth symphony, ode to joy. joy. Thank you. Beethoven found joy and wanted to share it with his audience. How often do we play Beethoven's Ninth Symphony with joy? How often do you think, my gosh, I'm going to approach this piece from the standpoint of joy? And everything else falls into line and leads us to that. So I would experiment. OK, where's the joy? Ya -da -da -dum. You can smile. You can like, ya -da -da -dum. Ya -da -da -dum. right? Have more fun, definitely. OK, let's hear piano now. Just by yourself. Sorry. It's interesting how it's very plain without the other voices, right? It's harder to play the music without the other voices. It's interesting. Now, can I ask you to do one thing? Can you have a little bit more? Da dum ba dum bum pa lum. Darker to brighter. You're going to start with more left hand, and then you're going to go to more right hand. Da dum ba dum bum pa lum. Pa lum da dum ba dum. And then for that ending, more even. Da la da la da. More left and right together. Da dum la dum ba dum. Nice, simple. Now complex. Da dum pum pa. La, more bass. Yes, good. So we hear the lower neighbor on the G sharp. Nice, absolutely. So you play with colors. That was so much more of a spread of sound, right? Does that make sense? We take our normal palette and we expand it. How far do we want to go? As far as you want to go. Absolutely, good. Uh, and you can you can never be done experimenting with that. Okay. I did, this, I did this once with um, uh, just a rehearsal with a very famous pianist uh, who is uh, Lang Lang, <laughs> Long Long. And uh, he brought up voices I'd never heard before. I found it very interesting. You know, he's very contro controversial. People love him or don't love him. Uh, <laughs> but I found, you know, the thing about, the, the, the greatest thing about him is he's not afraid to experiment and to, and to really imagine. His imagination is unbelievable. I heard things in the trial I've never heard before, and I played it a million times. So can we try it again one more time? Good, one more time. And this is the piano variation, so you guys have to be just a stream. Okay, good. So, make sure that you don't drop the phrase early, so or the or the variation early. So we don't want to just let go. I have to pull right to the very end. 
and then da 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 pom, and graciously. Right? It's, again, it's like a fountain, and then we just settle. Uh, I think you can have a lot more fun in the bass line. I think you can memorize that. Definitely. And I think you can look at him. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Can we just hear that? Just bass and uh, jazz. I see a jazz player there, Phil Rowan. Shout out to Phil. Oh, and <laughs> Lorenzo. <laughs> How are you doing, guys? Oh, my gosh, three of you guys. Wow. A lot of bass players. I wonder why. OK, sorry, I digress. Yeah, you can experiment, right. And also, OK, so we worry about sound and how when we're using the bow, what about sound in the pits? Maybe I can think about sound. What type of sound do I want? Maybe a little more boom, a little more uplifting sound, right? Can I borrow your bass? I'm going to take the long route. So, so if I play, if I play here, I can get a kind of more of a jazzy pits, a little more of a, if I play, if I lift, if I play next to my left hand, there's so many different ways, so many different ways of getting sound out with the pits. I want to think as many ways as I do with the arco with the bow. I can get as many sounds out, and I want to experiment with that. We, all, we never pay attention to pits, only about the bow, right? Good. Can, uh, can we move on to the next uh, variation? Okay, so whose variation is this? Yours? No. No, it's violin. Absolutely. I mean, he has a theme. He has a theme, but we've already heard the theme. And the thing about it is, if it makes it about the viola, then the, the violin part gets a little bit square. You should really feel as though it, it has, again, it's, we've already heard that before. Not to, not to play any less, but I think you can, you can think as though your part is a little bit more interesting. We've already heard that before. And again, of course, we want the viola to play enough in the theme. So can we try just viola and, and violin? And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to be freer. How free am I willing to be? Dum -dia -da -da -dum. Tempo? Tempo? Yeah, sure. Good. Okay. So how are you? How are you feeling the pulse here? A little bit where those are the beats. Maybe. How about this? So we have two bar phrases. Yeah? Can we try it one more time? Take a little bit more time at the top. Take your time. Good. Good. And right here. That's very good. And right here, da da da, la da da, ya da 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 da. That thing, the ya da 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 da. He's adding motion, right? Ya da 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 da. So it never should be ya da 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 da. But ya da 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 da. A little more energy, fountains, you know. That's very good. Now let me hear the just the viola. Very good. Love this on the viola. Good, okay, so how about this? Make sure that your rhythm is extremely ta la 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 la. Whenever you have that figure, 
Make sure it never goes da 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 la 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 la. A little more joyous, okay? And then the other thing is da da pa da pa pa. Pull us up to the higher notes. Da da pa da pa pa da. A little more shape to it, yeah. Can we try it again one more time? Very good. Pa da. It's almost there. You can work on that. Yeah. It's always going to be ta la da la da. Not separated, but making sure the long notes are never short. That's better. It's better. Good. Um, again, in classical music, long notes are long, and short notes are short. So you never want it to be over romanticized. Even that first D, I can lengthen that full value. Good. Okay, can we try it with everyone together? Good, that was so much better. I like that. Now the other dun da 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 da. When you go to the lower notes, you have to bring those out even more. Yeah, have more fun with that line. Absolutely. I think that maybe the balance is not quite there. It's a little bit thick. This can be a little bit, a little, give yourself a little more room. Uh, good, next variation. <coughs> okay, one more time. You guys have to make sure he's, it's actually his variation. We think it's a bass variation. No, it's the piano again. Okay, and, he, and the other thing is he has a trill. Can you just hear that? Yeah, so that's where you have to land. Da lum bum bum pa yum bum 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 pa. Good. One more time. Uh, you guys, you guys are starting. What bow are you doing? Oh, okay, down start down bow. Pa yum up 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 down. Try that down up. So it's still not, not quite with him. You guys have to really lock in, okay? Uh, it's very, uh, playing with winds, playing with piano as a string player, it's difficult, it's not easy, because he's so immediate, right? So timing has to be even, even more, on you have to be more on top of it, good. Uh, and then the other thing is ta yum bum bum pum pa dum D A, as rich as, and singing as you want. Good, let me hear just the piano, please. Good. And so because of a lot of it is like pulling you to the right, pulling you to the right, pulling you to the right, you're going to want to, you know, tense up your midsection, rib cage, hips. You have to make sure that you maintain your flexibility. I would say try not to lean. You don't need to. Keep everything loose. Absolutely, less tension is always better. That's very good. And then now the top is even brighter because you're not getting your weight there. It's kind of like it's a little more fingers, right? Um, now I would say also in this you can experiment with color. I would have a little more bass in the sound. 
and then it can be a little tinklier up top when you get up high, but a little more bass. Can we try it one more time? <laughs> And also here, you can think of this as think of this as waterfalls. Yeah, can you have a little more? Uh, even more. Keep it soft. Now more. Yeah, and then this thing and the chromaticism. Make sure you don't rush your chromaticism. Yes. Good. Yeah. And that's, isn't it when you when you hear when we hear chromaticism? Da, 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 it's so cute, right? Absolutely. That was great. Now, can we have everyone together? Da, yum, down, up, 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 down. Good, okay, good. Now let me now let me hear a violin and viola, please. Okay, you guys are so proper. You guys are so proper. Bum 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 bum. No, have fun. Yum bum 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 bum. Like you're poking somebody, you know? <laughs> you're running up to some. You're jabbing them. Yum bum 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 bum. Can we try that one more time? Have way more fun. Yeah. Oh, okay. One more time. So uh, two things I would say. If the if the stand is too low. In rehearsal, you're gonna wanna like you're not gonna be able to be together because you can't have the visual clue. So you wanna make sure it's all memorized for the beginning. You guys can look at each other. Yeah. Right. Good. That's much more fun. It's much more fun. You can go even further with it. Yum, bum, yum, bum, 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 bum. No two notes are created equal in your part. Okay, good. That's great. Uh, let's try the next variation. Very good. So I knew I, I told you I was going to talk about Noah. <laughs> this is the Great Flood. <laughs> so can we get, get a little bit more storm? <laughs> Waves crashing. Thunderstorm rolls through. It's not a long thunderstorm, but it's a big one. Yum. <laughs> the first two notes are connected completely. Da <laughs> Sorry. And. <laughs> Good. So maybe now we then there's a cut to like inside a little hole with some animals. Like, oh, they're having tea with the big storm raging, right? <laughs> whatever, whatever you imagine is fine. Doesn't matter as long as you imagine it. So uh, that was pretty good. It feels a little bit like the storm is like, oh, okay, I'm going to do some damage. Die. da 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 Earl Koenig, a little bit of that. da 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 little bit of that, okay? Can we try it one more time? Okay, good. Okay, and I would say maybe not too loud on those. Think of it as ya ta 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 ya ta 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 dun 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 ya ta 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 That's when you can bring it in, yeah? Even though it says fortissimo, we still need to hear that. And also it's a, a more lift in the sound. Ta 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 
ya ta 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 ta. Okay, and those are not dotted eighth notes, and then we have dotted eighth notes. Also, you can have a little more spread between the two ideas. Good. One more time. This is so much fun. More storm. <laughs> Good, okay, then the last thing I'm going to say for bass and cello. Bring out the low notes. Uh, gosh, my poor wife has to deal with this all the time. I'm sorry. Uh, good, and then how about maybe the clouds lift and the sun comes through? Something, like there's a, a time when in the middle of the hurricane, the eye, oh, look at that, it's nice. And then the storm comes back again. Can we try that? Just the arpeggio? Yeah. Ba, 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 ba. Okay. Uh, how about yum, bum, 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 ba, 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 <laughs> Okay, so here, you still have to have the idea of that leads everything through this entire uh, variation. If we don't feel that, then we're not going to line up, right? Kind of goes in and out a little bit. So you can definitely work on this. This is a very important um, a variation. This, this is like the big, again, the, the, it's kind of like, a, it's, where it's placed is a little bit like the, um, like the midlife crisis. So we can have a little bit of that. Okay, so uh, let's go on to the next variation. So this is after the storm, kind of sad, you know? Can I, have, can I say one thing? A balance is so important in the trout. Balance is so important. Uh, a little too loud from everyone except for the cello, I think. And then da, 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 da. that's just, you know, the drops of water coming back down after the storm, you yeah? know? And I would say for you, can I just hear your solo? Sad. Can I have a little bit more sad? <laughs> so like, oh please, Oh gosh, a little more, right? It makes you smile. It's good. One more time. So. Yeah, just think as so. though, find the color, find the color in your left hand first. Try it again one more time. Find the color first before you play with the bow. Bow down. Just the first note, even. Oh, just play that first note with the left hand. Think. Just stay there. Don't shift. Just stay there. It's uncomfortable, right? It's like, I don't want to stay here forever. Think of the next note. But don't do it. I'm being pulled up. You feel the pull, right? I want to go to that next note, but don't let yourself. Good, so once you get that feeling, then start. One more time. Yeah, all right, that pull. One more time with the bow. And, yeah, and then these short notes. These short notes, how about this? So that they're uh, pickups to the next beat. And, and la da da, good. So those long notes are long. Da la da 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 long, long da 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 And more moving da da la 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 la. Ah, everything's okay. Ah, da da da. Now this time can be a little bit different. 
then the second time can be a little different. It's a little more whimsical, right? Those chrom that chromaticism, chromaticism makes it more, mu uh, you know, you can have more fun the second time. Good. Uh, that's pretty good. I think that keeping within the color so it doesn't get, ah, but to, 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 that beautiful singing cello sound. Keep it all within that, like one package, okay? With as much dynamic variation as possible. Good. Okay, so can we try it with everyone? Uh, the rest, actually, how about the rest of the strings? Okay, so what I hear, I hear two things going on. I hear a little bit as though it's da 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 da. I think it should be based on the bass. He has the pulse. Boom, 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 boom. So it has a little more flow. Does that make sense? A little bit more flow. And I think bowing wise, down, down, up, up, down. That's what I do. So I just wait, lift, wait, so it doesn't become all the same. It's better, yeah. Ooh, that's great. Now again, we feel the pull a little bit, more of the dance element in there. And make sure that it never gets stuck. Never, it's always flowing, right? And again, if you are unsure musically of what to do, visualize. What do I see? Maybe a gentle water after the storm, okay? Can we try it with everyone? <laughs> almost there. I once played uh, for Mr. Sawyer. I played, uh, I love, I miss Mr. Sawyer. He was one of the, he was the greatest influence on my life musically and otherwise. Uh, you know, greatest cellist for me. Um, and uh, he, you know, he said, you really don't know how to play soft. I was like, yes I do. I can play in, in my mind. I didn't say that to him. He was a gruff man, but I loved the heck out of him. Uh, and uh, I said, no, you don't know how to play. So there was another bass player and I, and he said, okay, you play soft. So I played as soft as I could. He said, that's not soft. I said, you try. So then the next bass player up to bat, second bass. Uh, see, that was a joke. Uh, how soft can I play? Not, and he said, that's not soft enough. I'll show you what soft is. And he grabbed the bow and played the most beautiful soft note I'd ever heard. And he said, that's soft and I was just completely blown away. You never really know what soft is until you really go for it. And then once you go for it, there's even softer, but it's still with a beautiful sound. You wanna experiment with that. And it's not no bow, it is bow, but it's extremely light. Just like if I'm whispering, if I don't use any air, you can't hear what I'm saying. But if I use air, I can still get it across, and it's still soft, right? So the bow is the air. Good, let's try the next. Next thing, even more fun with that line. Uh, let's try the theme now. Let's try getting into it. Maybe the last, uh, where's a four good, bars. four bars, great. Always a good place to start. Don't let it die. I want the trout to die yet. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Good. 
And also that last note that you have is extremely important. So you want to bring that out. Okay? Can I, let's hear what the piano has, the last bar. Ah, that re resolves to? Right. So that has to be brought out a little bit. Good. One more time. Yeah, and who's leading? So if you go da la da dum. So we're going from very, very soft to quite loud. So I'm not able to hear that. Da, la, da, da. I think that you can bring that out a tiny Make sure that it goes into his sound and maybe not so. Da, la, da, dum, bum, ba, dum, bum, bum. Not too loud once you get to the allegretto. Okay? One more time. And you can hold that longer. Good. Keep going. Okay, let's start from right there. Okay, good. So this can get, again, we, I know it's the theme, it's the main song, it can get frantic. I think because of the, it's not just piano accompanying voice. So uh, can we try it again one more time? And can I have a up, 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 up down? So keep double, everything double up, up, up. all up, 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 I down. Know. Sure, why not? Why not? Da yum, bum, ba -dum, bum, ba. Have more fun. And da 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 not too fast more play Wait for that last note. What's the most important, before I leave, what's the most important bar in this entire piece? The most important bar. Look at the last bar of the piece, very last bar of the entire piece, last movement. Turn the page and tell me what you see. Grand pause. There's an entire bar of rest at the very end of this piece. That's the most important bar. What does that mean? Bum chum. What's next? Come back next week. <laughs> right? This is the greatest piece to finish with. The audience is going to be like, and come back. You'll hear more. <laughs> Great writing. OK, wonderful. So remember that. And it's about this, this joy. The love and the joy, how can I find it in my playing? Am I afraid to feel? If you are afraid to feel, let go completely. Life is too short to be afraid as a musician. How far am I willing to go with my music? The music leads everything. It's about understanding what it means to be the musician that's, that's collaborating with the composer and sharing that with the audience. There's nothing greater to bring the audience joy to make them smile, 
you know, and to have fun doing it. It's, the, it's really a wonderful thing to be playing music. You know, there will be going to be ups and downs, but you always want to make sure that, again, it's, I'm never really for myself. I can only see for myself. I'm never really doing it for myself. This is not about me. It's about future generations. Where are we going? Are we leaving them a, a, a wasteland of classical music? Or are we going to really pass information on? Are we going to share? Are we going to collaborate? Are we going to lift people up to a whole nother level through their, through their lives? That's the greatest thing about being a musician. And, uh, you know, and it's about passing that on. It's never about me. It's about where are we going after I'm done. Where's the, where does the phrase go? Right? Great job, guys. It's wonderful. Thanks so much for coming. And uh, if anyone has any questions about these pieces, my email is kurtmaroki at maroki.com. Welcome to email me at any time. I'll try to answer your questions. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bassist. My wife is a bass player. Oh, really? Yeah. I, oh, sorry. I'm in. Uh, my wife and I are.